Okay, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Paul I'll be presenting our work, low press amplifying rate disturbance in modern drum chips. In this work, we demonstrate and analyze low press, a new rate disturbance phenomenon that causes bitlets in real drum chips. We show that low press is different from low hammer, demonstrate it in a real system with a user level program, and provide effective solutions. Here's the outline of my talk, and I will start by some background in DRAM. DRAM is the pre pre prevalent technology for main memory. A DRAM cell stores one bit of information in a leaky capacitor, and DRAM cells are organized into DRAM rows. Read disturbance in DRAM has significant, uh, significant system level implications because it breaks memory isolation. A prominent example of this is row hammer, where repeatedly activating and closing a DRAM row many times causes bit flips in adjacent rows. Rohammer is the only studied read disruptive fact, and various mitigations work by detecting high row activity. This raises the following question What if there's another read disruptive phenomenon that does not rely on high row activity? We find that row press is indeed such a phenomenon. So, what is row press? Row press is the read disturbance caused by keeping a DRM open for a long time, causing bit flips in adjacent rows. These bit flips do not require many row activations, and we find in some cases only one activation is enough. Now let's see how this is di uh, different from relevant. Instead of high activation count, row press increases the time that the aggressor row stays open. Doing so disturbs adjacent rows enough to cause bit flips without a very high activation. We even observe bit flips with only one activation in extreme cases. Now let's take a look at our detailed characterization of row press. The two most important takeaways from our characterization results are first, Row press significantly amplifies DRAM's vulnerability to rate disturbance. Second, it is different from row hammer. Now let's see how uh, we get to these conclusions. I will start with our characterization methodology. Use an FPGA-based DDR4 testing infrastructure developed from DRAM vendor, which gives us fine-grained control over DRAM command, timing, and temperature. We test 164 DDR4 chips from all three major DRAM manufacturers, covering different die densities and uh, die revisions. The key metric we are looking at here is the minimum number of aggressor activations needed to induce at least one bit flip or AC minimum. We use a single-sided row press pattern as shown in the figure, where we only activate one single aggressor. We sweep the aggressor on time from 36 nanoseconds to 30 milliseconds. We use a checkerboard data pattern, and unless otherwise specified, we test the DRM chips at 50 degrees Celsius. We use a bisection-based algorithm to search for AC min, and we cap each search iteration at 60 milliseconds, which is strictly smaller than the refresh window to avoid seeing any undesired retention failures. This is enough to explain our uh, results that are going to be shown in the presentation, and we have many more sensitivity studies in the field. Next, let's see the, uh, key, the key characteristics of low press. I've already shown these two key takeaways. Now let's see some details. Row press amplifies read disturbance in DRAM because it reduces the minimum number of activations needed to induce a bit flip by one to two orders of magnitude. In extreme cases, only one activation causes bit flips. Row press also gets worse as temperature increases. Row press is different from row hammer because it affects a different set of cells and behaves differently as access pattern temperature changes compared to row hammer. Now let's see some detailed characterization results to understand how row press amplifies read disturbance. First, we look at how the minimum number of activations needed to induce a bit fit or AC main changes as aggressor on time increases. We show AC main on the Y axis and aggressor on time on the X axis, both in log scale of a representative derivation from manufacturer S. Each data point here shows the average AC main value across all DRAM rows we test, and the error band shows the minimum and maximum AC mean values we observe. When aggressor on time is 36 nanoseconds, our access pattern is identical to row hammer. And as we increase aggressor on time, we start to see the effect of row press. We highlight two potential upper bounds of aggressor on time, uh, uh, according to the data extended on the X axis, which are the refresh interval and nine times off. We also highlight AC mean equals one on the Y axis. We observe that as aggressor on time increases, AC means significantly reduces, and in, in, in extreme cases, only one activation causes 
we observe the same trend for all dyes we test from manufacturer S, and the same holds for almost all dye revisions from all three major DR manufacturers. We observe that as aggressor on time increases from 36 now second to 7.8 microsecond, ACME reduces by 21x on average across almost all dye revisions from all three major manufacturers. When, AC, uh, when aggressor on time increases to 70.2 microsecond, ACME reduces by 191x on average. We conclude rule press significantly reduces the minimum activation count to induce a bit fit as aggressor on time increases. Next, we investigate rule press at the higher temperature by looking at ACME at 80 degrees Celsius, normalized to that at 50, uh, at 50 degrees Celsius, which we show on the y axis. We observe that as aggressor on time increases, row press requires significantly fewer activations to cause split flips at 80 degrees Celsius compared to 50 degrees Celsius. We conclude row press gets worse as temperature increases. Next, let's see in detail how row press differs from low. We first look at this relationship between the cells vulnerable to row press with those vulnerable to row. We define the cells vulnerable to row press or row hammer by those experiencing bit fits with the minimum activation. We define the overlap between the cells vulnerable to row press and row hammer as the number of cells vulnerable to both row press and row hammer over the number of cells only vulnerable to row press. We show such overlap on the y axis. We observe as aggressor on time increases, and only a negligible amount of cells vulnerable to row press are also vulnerable to row hammer. We conclude most cells vulnerable to row press are not vulnerable to row hammer. We also look at the directionality of row hammer bit, uh, bit flips versus row uh, press bit flips, and we find that they have opposite directions. We also find that as aggressor on time increases beyond a certain level, single-sided row press becomes more effective at inducing bit flips, or in other words, it requires fewer activations to induce bit flips compared to a double-sided row press pattern. This is very different from row hammer where a double-sided row hammer is strictly more effective at inducing bit fits compared to single-sided. I've already showed that row press gets worse as temperature increases. This is also very different from row hammer. Now let's see our real system demonstration of row press. We demonstrate row press in a system with a recent Intel processor and a Samsung DDR4 module that already has TR row hammer mitigation. The key idea of our row press program is to keep a DRM row open for a longer period of time by keeping on accessing different cash blocks in the same row. Here's the key part of our program where we can change the number of cash blocks read per aggressor activation. Note that if we only access one cash block per aggressor activation, our program does the same as row. Well. We run the program on 1500 arbitrarily selected victim rows, and we show the total number of bit fibs as we change the number of cash blocks accessed per aggressor activation on the left and the total number of rows that has bit fits on the right. We conclude that leveraging row press, our user level program induces bit fits when row hammer can. Now let's see how to mitigate row press. We propose a methodology to adapt existing row hammer mitigations to also mitigate row press. The key idea is based on the characterization results we first limit the maximum time that a DRM row can stay open in the memory controller to strike a balance between uh, row buffer locality and the read disturbance caused by row press. The second, we configure the new row hammer mitigation to account for the row press induced reduction in the minimum activation count needed to cause bit flips. We evaluate our methodology onto existing row hammer mitigations, graphene and para, using Ramulator. The key metric we, we are looking at is the additional performance overhead of the adapted mitigations over the original ones. Our evaluations results show that we can mitigate row press at low additional performance overhead. Now let me conclude my talk. In this work, we demonstrated and analyzed row press, a widespread re-disturbance phenomenon that causes bit flips in real DRM chips. We characterize row press on DRM chips from all three major DRM manufacturers, and we find that first, row press greatly amplifies read disturbance by re reducing the minimum activation count needed to cause bit flips by one to two orders of magnitude. And in extreme cases, only one activation gives the bit flips. Second, row press has a different mechanism compared to row hand. We demonstrate row press in a real system with a user level program that can induce bit flips when row hammer can. We provide effective solutions to mitigate row press at low additional performance. Level. 
We have many more results and analysis in our paper, and our work is fully open source and artifact evaluated. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, questions? Was it just me, or did they say the average uh, improvement was negative? Like the average uh, performance penalty was negative. Uh, that's because we evaluate multi-program workloads and we measure this rate of speed up. And because we limit the maximum time that we we are going to stay open, it improves the fairness in some workloads. Okay. So that cost the like the average uh, slow down to be negative. Okay. Morning, Croatia, Georgia Tech. Very nice talk. A quick question for you. For regular workloads, what's the maximum time you saw that the row was open uh, for the baseline? Uh, we have some input tests, and I think the average number is about 1,500 nanoseconds to 1,800 nanoseconds for some workloads in back 2006. Great. So, so for one to two microseconds, if you keep the row open, what's the impact uh, on, on both ends? Uh, Is it like five percent reduction in activation time? For one to two microseconds, it could reduce. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't have an exact number <laughs> in my mind now, but the reduction should be large. Even for two microseconds? Yes, two microseconds. Thanks. Hi, uh, nice talk. Uh, I'm Irina from Apple. Um, a few questions. First is what causes rockets? Uh, so uh, while our paper is under review, there are a, a concurrent work put on archive by some engineers. They uh, basically explains there's a device level effect called passing a effect that attracts electrons from the victim cells. So, uh, and this effect is very uh, significant when you keep the aggressor only for a long time. And we believe that could be one of the device normal mechanisms to pass these kind of things. Okay. And have you evaluated this in ECC based DRAMs, like DRAMs with uh, in DRAM ECC? Uh, no, currently our infrastructure only supports GDR4, but we are working on evaluating this attack in uh, DRMs on the ICC like GDR4. So do you expect the severity to significantly reduce uh, with NDRAM uh, ECC based DRMs? Uh, so from the circuit level, we believe uh, it might only get worse because we have technology continues to scale down. But uh, if we add the effect of on the ECC, if we want to predict like uh, the bit clips with ECC, I'm afraid, uh, yeah, I cannot say uh, before we finish what she did. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Kevin Lachlan, University of Michigan. Awesome work. Um, I was wondering, are you referring it to read it to the phenomenon as read disturbance because it only works if you trigger the activation from a read or could it also work as a write disturbance effect because you can get the activation either way um and i believe but potentially i'm wrong here that row hammer could work with either reads or writes and so i'm wondering if row press is different uh yes yeah, so uh the the operation that matters is uh, activation of the row um, yeah i agree that uh, both method from a system's perspective, both read and write can trigger activation. So write can also work, but um, yeah, we use the term read disturbance because it's kind of like a legacy system from the time it comes. Yeah, thank the speaker again, please. Thank you so much. 